Welcome folks to CISSP Certified the Easy Way, Lessons from a Newly Minted CISSP. In this class, we're going to go over quite a few things to, to get certified for the CISSP. Uh, this will be things that you'll need to learn, so uh, pay attention and uh, we'll go uh, through them pretty quickly. Um, there's eight domains. There used to be ten. Uh, this isn't a big deal. A lot of the material is still on 10, so you need to pay attention to uh, that particular uh, uh, note. Uh, this makes the test uh, more streamlined. I say it makes it a lot easier because they combine a lot of the things and uh, ask fewer questions uh, related across the gamut. Um, less questions per domain. Uh, there's more real world questions. A lot of these are uh, things that you'll run into every single day that you uh, work in the real world and the uh, information technology. The uh, domains overlap and uh, all the questions except the crypto questions are non-technical. Always remember how, how your uh, CIO would answer. So always answer um, you know teamwork and uh, uh, evaluate with the board members and, and things like that. In uh, lesson one, we're going to cover uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability uh, concepts. Uh, you, you have to know your CIA by heart. Um, we're going to talk about security governance. Uh, I recommend getting the ITIL uh, before you do your CISSP. Uh, it'll, it'll take you a weekend. It may take you a week uh, if you work full time. Uh, recommend getting it though. Uh, compliance, legal, regulatory issues. Uh, SOCs, there'll be some memorization on the test. Uh, professional ethics, uh, you have to know your uh, ISC2 code by heart, so um, just uh, break out the, the memorization there. Uh, security policy standards, uh, be sure to know how they differ, uh, what's suggested versus uh, mandatory, it's important. In lesson two, we'll cover asset security, um, information asset classification, uh, you got to know all your layers, you know, like public and private and confidential. Um, ownership, data, quite a few questions concerning uh, who can change the data. Um, a lot of the ownership uh, uh, and data custodian, things like that. Uh, protection of privacy, retention periods, data security controls. Um, <clears throat> you'll see a lot of questions regarding shipping, chain of custody, handling requirements. Uh, marking, labels, uh, storage. <clears throat> In the security engineering uh, processes, we'll uh, go over design principle, models, uh, uh, capability functions, security architecture, web-based vulnerabilities. There's a lot on, uh, on the test concerning scripts and uh, mobile system vulnerabilities. So all your uh, blue words, your know, blue jacking, blue smacking, snarfy. And then uh, embedded devices and cyber physical systems uh, vulnerabilities. We'll go over that. Uh, crypt, uh, cryptography and cryptology. We'll we'll cover those. Uh, the, some most questions on the test. So public, private, non-repudiation. Uh, that stuff's pretty easy once you get it straight in your head. Uh, you'll be able to knock it out uh, no problem. Site and facility design. Uh, so how. Uh, hills are uh, supposed to be coming up to entrances and and uh, um, how your uh, slopes and and things work best for the facility and of course fence and light height uh, eight foot two candle looms you'll have to uh, you'll have to figure that out uh, man traps uh, desk check-in uh, they're all likely to be on the test Lesson four, um, security network architecture. It's communication network security, but uh, we'll go over firewalls, DMZ, secure network components. Uh, you gotta know your uh, screen subnet. Uh, you gotta know your bastion host, things like that. Um, encryption, TLS versus SSL. It's really just uh, one's newer than the other. Uh, satellite dishes. And then all your network attacks. So ping of death, teardrop, uh, uh, assist flood. Uh, you'll have to know all of those. Uh, lesson five will cover identity and access management, uh, physical and logical asset control, barcoding, inventory tagging, uh, identity as a service, uh, you know your SAML, um, you'll have to know all the identifications, uh, OAuth 2, third-party identity services, uh, AD questions, how the passwords are stored, 
um, of course the hash stuff, uh, brute force attacks, identity and access provisioning life cycles. Um, so some of that's a memorization uh, exercise, so you will know, have to remember that. Security asset uh, assessment and testing. So uh, this is uh, mainly focused on pen testing uh, and all the aspects of that. So uh, what what helps, what kind do you use, security process, uh, uh, the dumpster diving stuff, security control testing, testing outputs, uh, architecture vulnerabilities. Uh, so this is scanning. Uh, a lot of the pen test stuff is in this particular section. And lesson seven, security operations. Uh, this is a big one. Um, uh, it has to do with law and ethics. Uh, that's where they combine this one. But the investigation support and requirements, foundational security concepts. Uh, uh, you'll have to know your incident and patch management. So just remember those life cycles. Uh, figure out some mnemonic that helps you out, and uh, you can do it. Recovery strategies. Know your DR sites, your hot cold. Uh, you'll have to remember. Uh, you won't have to remember what times uh, it takes to restore them, but uh, you'll have to remember um, uh, the details associated with them. Uh, for instance, a hot site has equipment in it. Uh, disaster recovery process and plans. You'll have to know your uh, uh, disaster recovery plan, uh, your business continuity plan, and uh, your uh, business impact analysis and how they differ. Um, <clears throat> also, the personal safety concerns. Uh, above all, human life is the is the most important. And uh, in the supplemental at the end, we'll go over uh, how to calculate uh, single loss expectancy and uh, um, uh, and all of the math that you'll have to know. Uh, it actually ties to this particular lesson. Lesson eight, which is the last one, it's a software development security, uh, security and software development lifecycle. You'll have to know the rings, how they work. You only have to know uh, uh, two of them, which is zero and three. Three is the apps. Uh, I can't touch zero because that's the core uh, kernel. So uh, just remember those, and they're distinct. Uh, they're distinct and uh, useful uh, uh, characteristics. Development environment security controls. Uh, you'll have to know what stops a script. Uh, know know a few uh, SQL commands uh, just so that uh, you can uh, you can figure out uh, the, the SQL injection. Uh, question that you'll have or two and and then acquired software security impact uh, shrink wrap code shrink, shrink wrap code versus malicious attacks uh, versus uh, uh, purposeful backdoors uh, you'll have to know uh, some of the attacks uh, as far as programming and uh, with that uh, we'll move on to lesson one hey folks uh, continuing on with the CISSP uh, lesson one security and risk management uh, confidentiality integrity and availability concepts you got to know your CIA by heart in this lesson security governance and principles we'll go over a little bit of ITIL and the regulatory issues uh, you'll have some memorization like ISC2 code of ethics uh, you got to know that by heart uh, if you don't uh, you'll probably fail the test or at least miss that question security policies standards procedures guidelines you'll have to know the difference between all those basically what's mandatory versus suggested that's not hard at all let's get to it confidentiality integrity and availability are oftentimes called the security triad confidentiality has everything to do with encryption so uh, basically encrypting all of your data all of your assets uh, which they call data Integrity is keeping the data from being altered, uh, basically hashing. And availability is keeping the systems up and available. Also, this applies to your server side. Uh, your real, real world resources, uh, I'll click on this for you. But CC Cure is an organization that provides uh, uh, CISSP training. And basically, you can sign up for a test or training material and uh, it's a it's a very good resource so check that out confidentiality there's uh, two types symmetric and asymmetric and then there's the strength which are uh, how many bits encryption uh, that you have and uh, PKI which is the public key encryption 
you only know you only need to know the root uh, CAs for this particular uh, uh, issue and what those root CAs do. They provide a top level organization for providing uh, certificates. Uh, you can take a look at your MindCert category uh, and, and uh, check one of these confidentialities out. So this MindCert.com is a very good external resource to go through the cryptology. So if you take a look at this one, you can open uh, that particular one and it will show you every single cryptography uh, issue. And you'll have all of your root CAs, you'll have all of your symmetric and asymmetric uh, encryptions and how many bits they are, uh, they are uh, some of the history stuff. You don't need to know any of that stuff for the test, but it's uh, really nice to uh, learn. Uh, I had no test questions on uh, the difference between crypto analysis and cryptography, uh, but if you'd like to learn about those, this is definitely a good resource to do that. So definitely take a look at that link and uh, uh, check out those mind certs. Integrity is the d data was not altered anyway. It keeps it from uh, alterations, the actual opposite of this integrity, but it keeps it from being altered. And the two ways that they do that is hashing. One's MD5 and one's SHA1. Again, take uh, take a look at that MindCert area on the CIS CISSP site. It's a very good resource. And availability, the site and the servers are always up. This is pretty uh, standard. Site level redundancy, no hot, cold, and warm. I actually got a test question on reciprocal, and that's basically where you allow someone to uh, use your data center uh, for the purposes of their disaster recovery. It uh, will not work when they're in the same area, and uh, also it's the uh, slowest because you have uh, legal issues associated with it. So uh, definitely know that also. Uh, RAID level, you gotta know all of these. The basic RAID levels are uh, here. I've uh, linked to, to the Wikipedia associated with it. And uh, if you know zero through uh, five, you'll you'll uh, you'll be fine for the test, and they're pretty straightforward, common stuff. And then uh, of course this uh, uh, warm, hot, cold sites. Uh, Core Exchange uh, actually is a, um, dis a disaster recovery site uh, business rather, and that uh, has uh, uh, hot, cold, and uh, warm uh, definitions there. Uh, pretty standard stuff and uh, you'll have to know some of the uh, core differences in those but uh, there's only maybe two questions associated with those on the test. Governance, legal and ethic uh, issues. Uh, I suggest spending a weekend and getting ITIL certified. You can uh, actually start studying on a Friday, uh, take the test on a Monday, Monday afternoon and uh, the ITIL certifications will give you a good idea of what kind of governance that uh, the uh, CISSP takes. So I think that's a real good uh, reason to get that. Memorize the uh, ISCT Code of Ethics, and that's, uh, that's in these bullet points. You need to protect society, the Commonwealth, and infrastructure. Act honorably, honestly, justly, responsibly, legally. Provide diligent and competent service to principles and advance and protect the profession and uh, visit this uh, following site for the complete mind map for law, ethics, and regulations. So that mind map also uh, uh, has the uh, law and investigations. And let me open that for you. So this basically, if you zoom in on this, you can download these in PDF. These mind certs are pretty nice, but it has all of the life cycle and, and evidence types. Uh, I had no questions on best or secondary direct evidence, but a lot of people uh, uh, t uh, towed on those. Um, the Code of Ethics uh, definitely uh, ask a lot of questions on those. Um, and then the, the common crimes associated with uh, uh, DDoS and uh, theft of passwords, network intrusion. I uh, didn't get any of those. And then uh, didn't get any love letters or blaster worms. We're not going, they're not going to cover those at all because they're specific and they're not uh, high level questions. These uh, common law questions and, and uh, statutory laws, um, these abuse acts in Title 18 
uh, and computer fraud, I would memorize all of those particular acts because you will have questions associated with those. And then uh, down here, enticement versus entrapment, that's definitely two or three questions on the test. You can, uh, you can knock some off by remembering those different ones. And then the patent, trademark, copyright, and trade secret. There's uh, two or three questions concerning uh, those those particular areas. So definitely hit those up and, and uh, try to remember what the difference between all those are. They're really super easy to remember. Uh, trademark, obviously, and, and uh, copyright are, are uh, easily discernible. Policies, and etc. So uh, the easiest way to remember these is just to memorize them. Uh, there's a policy, standard, guideline, and procedure. Policy is a general management statement. Uh, we need to do something. A standard is specific and mandatory. Remember that this standard is a mandatory control. And then uh, guidelines, it's pretty much best practice or recommendations. And procedures are step-by-step uh, -step instructions. So you're going to need to remember those because that will cover maybe a question, maybe two. Um, definitely solve those on the test. And thank you. And uh, we're going to move on to lesson number two. In this lesson, we'll, we'll cover asset security. Information and asset classification is uh, big on the test. You have to know all the layers of public and government data classification, like confidential and private, etc. You'll need to understand ownership. And then there's a couple that you'll need to learn. There's a bunch of them that they list out, but uh, they're not on the test, so I don't think you should study them. Quite a few questions on the test concerning who can change the data and class it. And uh, protecting privacy, appropriate retention, uh, data security controls, uh, uh, so shipping, chain of custody, and handling requirements like marking, labeling, storage. Um, there's two areas of uh, information classification, public and government. The first is public, and uh, pasted this in here. It's uh, sensitive uh, data that ha has not limited access and requires a high degree of integrity. This is typically data that will do the most damage to the organization should it be disclosed. Then it goes up to confidential, which is data that might be less restrictive within the company, but might cause damage if disclosed. Private data is usually uh, compartmental or, or, or departmental. Uh, data that might do the company damage, but must be kept private for other reasons like HR, you don't want to know the salary of the CEO, stuff like that. Uh, proprietary is data that's disclosed outside the company on a limited basis or contains information that could reduce the company's competitive advantage, such as technical specs of a new product. And then there's public data, which is uh, least sensitive data used by the company and would cause the least harm if disclosed. This could be anything from data used for marketing to the number of employees in the company. Now, you'll have to uh, memorize these. Now, just use a little acronym for the uh, first letters of these, SCPPP, and uh, you'll, you'll be totally fine. It's going to ask you a couple of uh, questions uh, during the test, but uh, uh, they won't be hard and they'll be all CIO level. So you got to think like a upper management information technology person when you're answering these questions. Here are the government classifications, top secret. The uh, disclosure of the top secret data would cause severe damage to national security. That's uh, pretty, uh, pretty intense. Uh, you have secret, which is disclosure of secret data would cause serious damage to national security. This data is considered less sensitive than data classified as top secret. Confidential data is usually data that is exempt from disclosure under laws such as the Freedom of Information Act, but it's not classified as national security data. Uh, sensitive or SPU, sensitive but unclassified data, is data that is not considered vital to national security, but its disclosure would do harm. Uh, many agencies classify data they collect from citizens SPU. On uh, Canada, SPU classification is referred to as protected. Now, uh, this, this question exactly was on the test, so uh, you definitely want to uh, take a look at that in a deeper uh, uh, way. And then uh, unclassified is data that has no classification or is not sensitive. Again, you'll need to memorize all of those. Uh, ownership. Uh, you only have to know these two. So remember the data owner. So a member of senior management. 
and senior management is responsible for the asset and is compromised, it could be held responsible. So that data owner can delegate to some day-to-day -day duties, but it can't delegate total responsibility. Senior management is ultimately responsible. You got to remember that. A data owner can set the permissions on things uh, like file uh, level uh, information and things like that. So they're responsible for the security, but you just have to remember that ultimately responsible. So when a test question says these two words, you remember who it is, it's data owner. And the custodian is uh, usually someone in the IT department. Uh, the data custodian does not decide what controls are needed, but he or she does implement the controls. So this implementing controls is one of the key, uh, two of the key words associated with the, uh, the test questions. So remember those, that when you get implementing, it's uh, usually data custodian or always data custodian. Uh, they work on behalf of the data owner. Other responsibilities include day-to-day -day management of the asset, controlling access, adding or removing privileges for individual users, and ensuring that the proper controls have been implemented uh, are all part of the data custodian's daily tasks. And uh, anytime they say daily tasks, uh, that's another keyword. Uh, data security controls. So marking, labeling, handling, uh, these will be a couple questions on the test and they'll basically uh, have these three uh, along with uh, other threes in uh, in the area and ask you which one applies to backups and uh, tapes. And then uh, data security controls like shipping, chain of custody. Uh, basically, you're not allowed to open boxes on the way to their, their uh, destination. And uh, if you lose your uh, hard drive or you go to lunch when you've got a box open, uh, you've screwed up the chain of custody. You can't do that. And then there's data destruction. So you basically want to always uh, review the policy associated with uh, data destruction and computer destruction. And then uh, tape backup security. Uh, this will be an encryption question associated with tape backups, usually on the test that uh, ask you if uh, uh, it's right to uh, put security on a tape backup if you haven't ever had it before. Are the other tapes still good or not? And uh, that'll complete the lesson two. Let's move on to lesson three. Okay, lesson three, security engineering. Uh, this has to do with the security engineering processes using secure design principles, uh, security models of elevations, capabilities, uh, the concepts of those models, security architecture. You're gonna, we're going to go over web-based uh, vulnerabilities, uh, script versus cross-site, mobile system vulnerabilities, embedded devices and cyber physical systems, uh, crypto cryptography. The most, uh, the most questions on the test are actually about this. So. We'll go over that. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Site and facility design and the physical security. So you'll have to know uh, a bunch of that for the test. So security models. Uh, I've listed them out here. Uh, the architecture models for uh, uh, each of the areas, access matrix, uh, uh, Bella, uh, Biba, Clark Wilson, non-interference, information flow, and their attributes, uh, basically what they're allowed to do, and then their policies. So uh, the the bell is the the Mac. So that's going to be government level, and uh, you want to just remember that uh, the no read up, no write down, and uh, there's actually really easy ways to remember these. And let me show you. Security miles. So if the test asks about lattice, lattice. It is uh, Clark Wilson and uh, the Bella La Padula model. All you have to remember is rides ugly white donkeys. No, everything is no. So it's no, ra read up, no, write down. Everything else is the opposite. So let me go back and show you the previous one. So the Bella is no read up, no write down, and it's Mac level security. So uh, mandatory access control is basically government level security. So that's the only one that you have to remember. The rest are just the opposite and they're for uh, common companies. They're not for government level. So Bella is government 
and remember rides ugly white donkeys everything else is opposite so uh, no write down I'm sorry no read down right and no right up it's the opposite that's all you gotta remember so Bella rides ugly white donkeys web-based vulnerabilities the, uh, these are actually uh, two of the ones that you'll have to remember they're the only two on the test so uh, they're fairly easy the uh, cross uh, site uh, CSRF uh, is an attack which uh, forces an end user to execute unwanted actions on the web. Basically, um, remember if you don't see script, it's probably this attack, especially when two sites are involved. Uh, so basically, you're authenticated on one site, it opens up a second where it's already got you authenticated, and uh, and that uh, does the cross site. And then the uh, the scripting the XSS as a tax on type of injection so these are these are just like a SQL injection remember when you see the script you got that you got this uh, this issue remember that checking your inputs is the best defense to this or a SQL injection so basically user inputs are the things that that prevent this so you have your XSS and here's an example and the CSRF is an example here so you basically have a new password. Okay. Mobile system vulnerabilities. You'll have to remember a couple of these. Blue jacking. Uh, I think this is a high tech version of uh, Ding Dong and Ditch, uh, where the savvy pranksters push unsolicited message to engage or annoy you. Um, they take advantage of a loophole in the tech to just basically this is spamming for uh, your phone and blue snarfing. So uh, more damage than bluejacking and snarfing with uh, while blue snarfing thieves uh, wireless connect to some of your earlier Bluetooth enabled mobile devices without your knowledge and download all your phone books, calendars, or even worse, your passwords, credit cards. Okay, cryptography. So uh, non-repudiation is something you'll have to remember for the test. You'll have a, a question or two on it. You can't basically means you can't deny it came from you when you digitally sign a message with your key with your private key so what's a private key uh, private key and encryption is a symmet is symmetric you'll have to remember that it uses the same key for both encryption and decryption it's faster than public um, asymmetric and um, it's DES right and triple DES so you'll have to remember that one uh, think WinZip uh, file with a password. So basically, if I'm using just private key encryption, I take a WinZip file, I put a password on it, I mail that to someone, and then I call them and tell them the password. Uh, this private key symmetric encryption is what I've been using to do that. But public keys uh, slower. Um, it's based on RSA. Um, it's asymmetrics, what they call it. It uses two keys. It uses a private to encrypt. And, and the public to decrypt. So, but who's, uh, who's private and public does it use? So this is what you'll have to remember for the asymmetric uh, encryption. And there'll be maybe three, maybe four questions on the test that will have to do with this. And they'll basically ask you uh, if Alice is sending a message to Bob, um, it requests his public key, Bob sends his public key to Alice, Alice uses that public key to encrypt the message sent to Bob. Right? And then Bob uses his private key to decrypt the message. So basically, Alice is encrypting it, right, with the information that's available to everyone. But since since Bob is the one he's she's sending to, Bob has to decrypt it with his private key, right? So that's uh, this is just something you'll have to remember and uh, understand. Uh, the way the asymmetric keys work basically you're encrypting with the other person's public they're decrypting with their private so that they that you know that they're the ones that uh, and the only ones that received it now if they want to know non-repudiation and they want to have non-repudiation meaning they know you sent it uh, then you're gonna have to sign it with your private key 
and uh, and then still go through this whole exercise of grabbing their public and having them decrypt it with their private. Um, they'll also look at your public to decrypt that particular key that you signed. So they're not going to ask you a question on that particular area. Uh, more, it'll be more high level and general as far as non-repudiation is concerned. But just remember this asymmetric keys and how they work. Facility design specifications. So remember when uh, what locks can be picked and what ones need to be bumped. <laughs> There's a question or two on that. Uh, remember how high the lights need to be. Uh, got a question on that. Uh, carefully review the following site for physics uh, for the physical security review. And again, this is that MindCert uh, um, website. And uh, just let me go down here and show you the uh, physical security. It is a PDF and you can download it and print it off and go through it and it has a lot of information associated with environmental or life safety. Uh, you'll get a couple of these uh, uh, tests on loss of powers so sag, spike, um, brownout. Um, I definitely got some of those. Uh, you'll not have any of uh, the static. You'll get uh, uh, humidity question when it's wet in a data center. Uh, those are uh, those are pretty common on the test and uh, fire suppression systems are uh, common on the on the test too so remember that deluge is a large amount of water uh, wet pipe is a uh, constantly filled dry pipe is not so remembering those particular areas uh, the controls for physical security uh, it's going to be choosing the uh, site, so basically emergency shutdowns. Remember, the only thing that you have to have to really remember is that loss of life and people are the number one uh, security concern when we're talking physical. So uh, anything that you pick is is got to be um, humans first. Okay, so. Uh, dogs, lighting, eight foot high uh, lights, two foot candle power like I talked before. And fencing is eight foot with barbed wire that deters them. Uh, six to seven foot harder and three to four is the casual trespasser. Um, there is questions on lighting and fencing uh, and locks uh, associated with this on the test. So you need to remember those. And that'll be it for lesson three. Uh, we'll go on to lesson four. Welcome folks to lesson four, communication and network security. Securing networks and architecture design, uh, IP, non-IP protocols, segmentation. Uh, we'll go over in this uh, section, firewall and DMZ questions that appear in the test, uh, secure network components. Uh, we'll review secure communication channels, um, and common known uh, network attacks. Let's get to it. So secure network design and components. Uh, they'll ask you on the test uh, things like uh, bastion hosts. Um, it's basically a, a computer that's exposed to the internet. It's hardened. Uh, you expect to get attacked. That's why you've hardened it. Uh, it's your front line. Uh, the other items that you'll go over are screen subnet. Uh, you'll get a couple of questions on what's the most secure way that and uh, any questions on that. It's always the screen subnet. Uh, it's basically a bastion host between an internal and an external firewall. I've included a picture of it here. So this bastion host sits between the internal and external uh, firewalls. And then the last thing is a proxy server. Um, proxy server, you'll have to note that uh, it can be used for outbound or inbound uh, to mask a client's identity. Another item for uh, network design and components are honeypots. They uh, lure bad people into doing bad things, uh, let you watch them. So there's a couple of the questions on the test, obviously, that are going to be about that. Uh, and the item that you need to understand and learn is that. Uh, enticing not entrapping is what you want to do the difference is that you're not allowed to let them download items with enticement if you stick a fake payroll file out there let them download it then you bust them uh, you've entrapped them 
So you have to remember that. And honey pots are just a lure uh, for people to do bad things in it. The firewalls. Uh, remember the stateless stateless firewalls. They watch network traffic, and they restrict or block packets based on the source and destination, uh, and other static values. Uh, they're they're not aware of uh, traffic patterns or data flows. Stateless firewall uh, uses simple rule sets that don't account for the possibility that a packet might be received by the firewall pretending to be someone else. Basically, it's dumb. Uh, stateful remembers uh, uh, they can they watch network traffic streams from end to end, so they remember your uh, communications path. And if you didn't come through before, you can't come through again. Uh, basically, remembers it. So uh, just remember those two uh, those two items. Um, and then uh, neither is really superior, and they're good. There's good arguments for both types of firewall. Uh, stateless firewalls are typically faster. We'll have to remember that. Um, uh, type one firewalls are basically super fast, and they pre uh, perform better under heavier loads. Stateful firewalls are better at identifying unauthorized or forged communications. So just remember those two. IDS, IPS. Um, these are almost synonymous now, but uh, you'll have to remember intrusion detection systems. Uh, to, it's basically detects it uh, when a known event is detected, a log message is generated detailing the event. Uh, whereas an intrusion prevention system is basically a device or app that uh, uh, looks at the whole pack at the header and the payload looking for a known event uh, when a known event is detected the pack gets rejected so it prevents it rather than just detects it um, and then you'll need to know uh, things like uh, about the known event whether it's uh, um, uh, always known or if it's uh, if it's never been seen so just remember those two items. Uh, secure uh, communication channels. There's uh, there are going to be a few questions on communication channels for uh, satellite dish technology. Uh, you take a look at this uh, link that I put on here from the InfoSec Institute. It's actually pretty good. Um, it goes into uh, uh, hacking satellites. Because uh, if you want to watch it, just take a look at the video and. Uh, and then uh, read through the contents pretty good and then uh, for TLS and SSL you simply have to remember that TLS is, uh, is newer than SSL uh, network attacks uh, so remember the denial of service the distributed denial of service you'll have to remember a sin flood fraggle a land and a teardrop and uh, these are basically the ones that uh, you have on the they're asked on a test. A sin flood's a form of denial of service. Um, it's basically you just you swamp it with a uh, with a whole bunch of sin requests. Um, and if you take a look at how TCPI works with its sin and a acknowledgement or ACK, uh, then you'll know what a sin flood is. It's a denial of service. A fraggle is a denial of service. Also, it uses UDP um, <clears throat> rather than sin. It's uh, it's similar to a Smurf attack. So uh, a Smurf attack uses uh, I ICMP. Um, so it's it's a bunch of pings, whereas a Fraggle's a UDP. Uh, take a look at land attack. You can read through that, uh, but it's uh, it's basically when the source of the destination is yourself, is your own computer. So if you if you take a look at a question on the test and you get one that tells you about uh, this particular denial of service and uh, the IP is set to home, you know, um, then uh, you're looking at a land attack. And then the teardrop attack, the last one there is uh, uh, basically denial of service that uh, involves sending fragmented uh, packets, and the packets are big and then they get small, like a tear. So um, just think teardrop attack when they uh, when they're all fragmented. So that'll end uh, lesson four. Thank you. Uh, on to lesson five. Welcome to uh, lesson five, identity and access management. On this uh, lesson, we'll cover physical and logical asset control, barcoding, inventory tagging, identification and authentication of people and devices, identify uh, uh, as a service, a cloud identity. Uh, you, you know, I will have to know SAML and OAuth two, third-party identity services. AD questions, a few of those. How's password stored? Uh, access control attacks, so you know your brute force and that, and that type of stuff. 
identity and access provisioning lifecycle, and there's some memorization there. Let's get started. Physical and logical asset asset control, uh, barcode and inventory tagging. So uh, RFD barcoding and inventory. Uh, these represent the ability to prevent theft. That's all it does. So this reduces risk. Any questions on this? Simply point this out, and are to be answered like a CTO CIO would answer. Very long, not technical. That's how you answer all of those questions. Identification and authentication of people and devices. Uh, know your brute force attacks. So best on a spreadsheet and their passwords. If you get questions associated with uh, what's the best way to crack a spreadsheet and a big long password, um, that's it. Uh, know your uh, biometrics. Um, basically, I'll open this up. CC Cures actually get a really good biometrics uh, uh, detailed uh, right up here. So um, talks about your accuracy. It's the most critical component of the biometric system. Uh, your false reject rate, uh, basically the uh, the amount of times that rejects uh, versus the amount of times that uh, it falsely accepts someone. You got to read through these. You have to memorize these because um, they will be on the test. And uh, your crossover error, error rate, the lower it gets, uh, uh, the better it is. And uh, you basically adjust it till it's only picking up people that it should. Uh, your speed and throughput rate, um, five seconds. You'll uh, probably not get any questions on the test for that, but it's a, it's a good thing to remember just in case. And the acceptability to users. Um, basically, when you read through this, the acceptability to the users is important of a biometric system. Uh, things like a retina scan that like blows puffs of air into your eye uh, aren't as acceptable as uh, a hand scan. So you want to remember those. And uh, I put a little uh, picture over here. Uh, basically, the false uh, acceptance rate and the false rejection rate where they cross is the CI, uh, CER and uh, that sensitivity as it goes up. So um, another thing on this is the object reuse. So space on the disk and it's allocated and uh, not given back to a de uh, the OS, um, that uh, is a vulnerability. So basically you could reuse that data that sits on that uh, uh, block on the hard drive uh, for uh, bad purposes. So, uh, you gotta know uh, Tempest Attack and uh, White Noise. A few of the questions on this like the Tempest Attack, which is uh, it's a reading at a screen at a, at a distance. Um, pretty easy to remember. And white noise. You can uh, pump it down a wire to scramble or mask an attack. Uh, so basically remember those two things. SAML and OAuth. So uh, Security Assertion Markup Language, SAML. Uh, it's basically Active Directory in the cloud. It's an XML-based open standard data format for exchanging authentication and authorization data between parties, in particular between identity provider and a service provider. Uh, so you, you have something like Amazon and you want to run Active Directory at your site, um, you, you basically need to use SAML to do that. Um, open o OAuth, or Open Standard for Authorization, commonly used as a way to internet users to log on to third-party websites. So you ever been on LinkedIn or Facebook where a third party says, hey, verify your LinkedIn uh, email address and password and, and then I'll authenticate you to this they're using OAuth to do that so just remember the definitions of those two because it'll probably come up AD passwords so Active Directory passwords are stored as a hash for further details you can review the following link so this Passscape has a has a great write-up on um, uh, basically your Windows recovery password and uh, how do passwords become encrypted um, read through that um, it's super it's super nice and then uh, read through the where the password hashes are stored so those two things with this config here hint hint are really important uh, for the test okay and then uh, Kerbos Kerberos <laughs> it's the uh, it's the mythical dog but it's basically how uh, the key distribution center um, and uh, gets authenticated with Active Directory, basically how you get resources on an Active Directory domain. And here's a little uh, diagram of it that I've uh, pasted in here. But just know that in Kerberos, 
uh, replay attacks are the biggest vulnerability uh, for those particular uh, for that particular scenario. It's good to remember. Uh, access control. You'll have to remember all types of the access controls. Um, this uh, study blog spot here uh, gives a good list of those. Uh, preventative access, deterrent access, detective. Uh, detectives like a CCTV, you'll have to remember that. Job rotation, uh, mandatory vacations, audit trails, all of these things right here you'll have to remember as detective access controls. So just remember those. Uh, that's important. You'll get quite a few questions on those. Um, directive administrative access controls are another one, which is hiring practice, background checks, procedures, policies. That's administrative access control. Um, then logic, just think of uh, all technical stuff so it's firewalls routers and then physical you know that's guards and, and dogs and video cameras things like that um, so if you're if you're doing a detective um, control that's also physical it'd probably be a camera so you're gonna remember those that, and they can actually combine some of those too um, so just read through them and uh, really get the detail on those it's important Um, some of the access control attacks, and these are basically uh, attacks that the people use to get uh, hold of your um, hold of your credentials. Dictionary attacks, so they run through the entire gamut of the uh, dictionary. It's easy. Uh, brute force, basically they try all combos, letter by letter. And you'll remember you need to remember that's it's not not trying all possible words. Like it doesn't try uh, alpha and then omega. It tries A and then B and then C and it tries them one at a time. So very exhausting. Uh, spoof logon screen, so you make a fake logon screen. I didn't get any questions in the test about that, but um, you may. So just remember it. And prevention against authentication and access control attacks. Um, to circumvent all these attacks, you'll need to do uh, long passwords. It uh, You'll get a couple questions on the test where you'll have uh, a password. It'll be a technical question where uh, you'll have a password uh, and you'll have to pick the best one. Pick the weirdest looking one possible. That's really the best way to do that. Okay. Uh, identity and access provisioning lifecycle. So basically uh, this is a memorization technique. You'll have to provision, give them a password, request, uh, request access, modify, disable, retire, and it keeps going around and around. So remember these. Just find a uh, really neat mnemonic that uh, you can uh, use to remember it. <clears throat> and that'll end uh, lesson five on the lesson six. Thank you. Welcome to lesson six, security assessment and testing. So assessment and test strategies we'll go over, uh, know what kind of testing, security process data, security control testing, security architecture and vulnerabilities. Uh, assessment and test strategies, basically the test will ask a lot of the pen test stuff. So it's called penetration testing and uh, consists of war dialing, like you gotta make a modems, uh, sniffing, where you monitor the network and you're capturing passwords, you're eavesdropping, basically you're listening with your ears, you're walking up uh, behind someone. Uh, sometimes it's uh, called shoulder, shoulder surfing, uh, dumpster diving, just like it sounds, you're going through the papers of the, the place. Um, that's a, a physical uh, control, uh, physical attack. Uh, social engineering, human manipulation, right? So uh, basically you're tricking someone. Uh, security process data, so employment policies and practices. Uh, basically I know, I know the test asks about termination processes and you have to have a really good one and background checks. So it's really important. Um, and those are administrative controls. Uh, roles and responsibilities, so management sets the standard and verbalizes the pol uh, policy. So basically any question where you're uh, you're trying to be asked or where you're being asked, hey, who sets the standard, who sets the bar, uh, who approves the biggest, right, blah, 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 it's always management. Um, security awareness training, so it prevents social engineering. Uh, security awareness training is very important and a really good concept to understand is basically you're training people not to get fished or uh, attacked um, um, like in, uh, in the cyber world.
So uh, don't open emails, uh, don't follow malicious links, things like that. Pay attention. Security uh, control testing vulnerabilities. Um, this Mindsert, uh, uh, one of the best sites for mind maps. It's uh, it's got the security controls on here. So if you go um, to that link there and you go down to access control systems, and you open that one up. It's a PDF, and basically you can go through all of the uh, access controls. So um, the single sign-on stuff we talked about, but um, the access controls, the three goals, uh, control types, combinations. So these uh, particular items uh, uh, won't be on the test, but these Mac and uh, uh, DAC, all of these things right down here, uh, they'll be on your test. And remember these type one, two, three authentications. Um, basically your password pins, uh, your more complex type two tokens, um, type three authentication, something you know, something you have, something you are, right? So uh, remember those three, those are important. And uh, uh, these other ones you can just gloss over like Kerberos and uh, Sesame. Those are uh, uh, older and uh, won't, uh, probably will not be on the test in great detail. Um, the intrusion detection is uh, uh, signature behavior based. This is important to understand here. Uh, we went over that in the network part, but uh, since they combined these and broke them out a different way from eight to ten or from ten to eight, um, they included this one in the uh, in the old old one. So remember these signature and behavior based ones, network and host, all this stuff here. Okay. Close that. And that uh, concludes lesson six. Uh, on to lesson seven. Welcome to uh, Lesson 7, Security Operations, uh, Investigation Support and Requirements. We're going to go over that. Uh, foundational Security Concepts, your Incident Management, your Patch and Vulnerability Management, your Change Management Process, your Recovery Sites, uh, DR, Hot, Cold, Disaster Recovery Processes and Plans. Uh, we're going to go over Business Continuity and uh, BCP, BIA, uh, so, and Personal Safety Concerns. Let's get to it. Uh, first, you'll have to know your law stuff. So the MindCert has a really nice uh, law uh, certifications right up here at the top. And if you open that, it's a PDF. And you zoom in a little bit. You'll see that uh, the, the uh, law and ethics take on uh, quite a bit of uh, items. Uh, we went through that code of ethics, uh, problems, and evidence. Uh, so basically, on this particular part, you want to learn your uh, types of evidence, direct and conclusive, circumstantial, secondary evidence. So just memorize these because you'll get uh, a couple of questions on those particular ones. Uh, I don't think there'll be very many uh, uh, laws on the um, common admin regulatory, uh, but the patent and trademark copyright. I think we went through those before, but uh, there'll be some questions on those, so remember those. Okay. Uh, incident management. So incident management is a term describing the activities of an organization to identify, analyze, and correct hazards to prevent a future reoccurrence. Uh, these incidents within a structured, or structured, structured organization are normally dealt with by either an incident response team, so IRT, that's an important term, and, and, or, and or an incident management team. Uh, so basically, you'll just have to remember these initial detection recording, classify it, diagnose it, or resolve it, and it goes on and on. So remember that the IRT team does all of these and uh, um, just commit them to memory with some kind of mnemonic. Patch management, the same way. It's an area of systems management that involves acquiring, testing, installing multiple patches, code changes to an administrator computer, administrator, administrated computer system. So. Uh, remember that it says code changes so these this deployment works in the same way for code as it does for patches um, so basically update the vulnerabilities scan the network identify download and deploy generate status reports so you put them on there and you figure out how they went on if they went out good so uh, just uh, find some mnemonic to remember this one too okay 
recovery strategies. So recovery strategies are uh, BCP and, and a disaster recovery, otherwise known as DR. Um, Mindsert's got a really good one for that too. So if you go down, you'll see the business continuity and recovery planning. So we'll open this up in PDF and you'll see all of the testing and compromising of disaster recovery uh, versus the all, all of the uh, stuff associated with BCP, the BIA, the scope and planning. Uh, these are the areas. So uh, print this out, uh, read through um, this BIA section over on the BCP and the uh, testing the plan over here on the DRP. Those are the areas that you have to remember. Okay. And then uh, know your site types. So your hot, cold, and warm. Uh, hot, cold, warm, you'll have to remember those. And a mirrored site, uh, uh, also a site that they allow you to uh, um, they allow you to, to uh, rent out, uh, has their stuff in it. Just remember that if you have a mirrored site, uh, not, to, um, not to have it in the same geographical location as to prevent uh, that type of risk. And uh, uh, RTO and RPO, you don't have to remember these 72 hours and 30 seconds if you, if you don't want to. Um, I always did because uh, I thought you needed to. RPO and RTO, those are important terms. The RPO is a recovery point objective. Uh, it's the age of the files must be recovered for the backup storage for normal operations resume if a computer system or network goes down as a result of a hardware program or communication failure. Um, it's the age of the files that must be recovered from backup storage. So, recovery point objective versus the recovery time objective. It's the duration of time of a service level. So this is your SLA, right? Uh, which is a business process must be restored after disaster in order to avoid unaccepted consequences associated with the break in continuity. So this is the uh, amount of time it takes you to do it. Um, this is uh, how long ago the files were. Um, I restored files from yesterday, RPO, um, and it took me uh, an hour, RTO. Uh, BCP and BIA lifecycle. So the business continuity plan um, in the business impact analysis. So in, in order to fix these and, and uh, fix these to memory, you'll need to learn these, uh, these terms. The BCP has the BIA in it. So you'll have a couple of little tricky questions to ask what stage the BCP is in the, in the BIA life cycle. It's not true, it's the other way around. So the business continuity is identify, analyze, design, execute, and measure. Right, so you have to remember those. And on the analyze stage, you'll have the business impact analysis, which you'll have to remember also. Identify the vulnerabilities, the loss, the recovery resolution, implement the solutions, and document the results. Um, <clears throat> so once you identify all these vulnerabilities in this uh, business impact, and you'll uh, you'll be able to figure out uh, your risk. And uh, I've got a supplemental later on that will show you how to. Uh, calculate your uh, single loss expectancy and stuff. You'll have a few questions that uh, require a little bit of math. Sorry. So commit these to memory and uh, you'll do really well. Uh, above all, people are the most important thing in any system. You have any questions at all on the test that ask you um, anything about uh, levels of security and uh, uh, what do you do first in a fire evacuation blah 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 people are the most important thing in any system so uh, if any of the choices are uh, uh, evacuate the people inform the people tell the people anything like that it's uh, it's the right choice so that'll conclude lesson seven uh, thank you on the lesson eight Welcome folks to Lesson 8, Software Developed Security. It's actually the last lesson. Uh, summary and uh, conclusion, some supplementals are after this. Uh, so let's, uh, we're going to go over to uh, security and software development lifecycle. You have to know your rings and uh, your development environments, security controls, your acquired software security impact, uh, shrink wrap, malicious, backdoors, things like that. Let's get to it. So um, security in the SDLC, uh, rings are easy to remember. So ring zero is your kernel. You can't access it. The device drivers cannot. Um, the applications cannot. 
Uh, the only thing you'll have to learn is ring zero and ring three. So ring three sits at the application level. That's where the user access is. Uh, ring zero is the kernel. The user can't get to the kernel. Okay, and then SDLC is a little bit harder. So you'll just have to remember the uh, requirements analysis. Uh, if you're in IT at all, you'll understand these requirements analysis. Then you design it, implement it, test it, and then uh, uh, evolve it. So you uh, upgrade it, put patches on it, whatever. Get the uh, users to uh, give you feedback. So you'll need to commit that to memory. Development environment security controls. So MindWap uh, absolutely has a, a, another one here. It's actually not bad. It's all the way at the uh, bottom here. Application system design or development rather. Um, <clears throat> so basically the system development lifecycle, we went over that. Um, the application security controls, uh, you, you'll have to know some of these uh, buffer, buffer, buffer overflows and uh, covert channels, uh, object reuse, uh, I think we went over that. So take a look at that. Uh, you'll have to know that. Uh, preventive, detective, uh, corrective. Uh, we already went over those, but you can review those again. And then um, you'll not know, you won't have to know any of this uh, uh, jargon except for primary and foreign keys. So you'll do a couple questions on the database side of the house uh, for primary and foreign keys. So remember what those two are and <clears throat> the uh, SQL, um, select, update, insert, You'll, uh, you'll have a couple of questions that, that if you uh, see a SQL injection attack, you can do that if you learn those particular items. Um, I'm looking down through here. Uh, you won't have to know any of these data dictionaries or uh, cell suppression, any of those stuff. Uh, the OOP concepts, um, I didn't have anything on the uh, uh, polymorphism or, or encapsulation, any of that stuff. So uh, just uh, breeze through this, uh, but definitely take a look at it. And then the software development so, uh, cycles, the uh, or models rather, you can have the uh, waterfall, the simple the spiral. I didn't get any questions, but you certainly may uh, on your test. So uh, please just review those and, and uh, uh, go over them with care. Don't uh, uh, don't beat yourself up about it. And then this other stuff you could just barely breeze through. Um, the capability maturity model, um, you can memorize this if you want. Uh, you may uh, get one question on it, so. But this mind map is pretty accurate. Okay. Uh, acquired software security impacts. So, um, there's really four types of uh, security impacts: uh, operation system attacks. Uh, this is basically where you're attacking the operating system. And uh, it goes back to that patch management. So when, if you're doing your patch management, your operating system vulnerabilities and the exploits and the uh, attacks against the operating system are very, uh, very low. Uh, buffer overflow, bugs in the operating system, things like that. Basically, they're attacked on unpatched operating systems. <clears throat> and then the application level attacks. So basically, these are cross-site buffer overflow, overflow SQL injection, session, session hijacking, phishing, uh, all of those type uh, shrink wrap code uh, basically these are usually disgruntled uh, uh, developers that are uh, packaging their actual applications with uh, uh, bugs or back doors in them um, so uh, watch out for a question on that and then misconfiguration attacks uh, uh, you forget to give permissions to an authorized user user or you don't uh, don't uh, audit them you'll have a question on uh, auditing you probably have a question on auditing the uh, uh, permissions uh, associated with your entire system um, uh, on a routine basis. So you definitely want to uh, twice a year or at least at a minimum yearly uh, go and audit all of your uh, passwords and access controls. So that's really all it for uh, that's it for uh, software development. Um, thank you, and uh, we're gonna wrap this up with uh, a summary and uh, some supplemental items for you to be able to do. So, folks, you've uh, made it through. This is basically the summary of the entire uh, series, uh, all eight lessons, and uh, uh, these are a few of the tips for the uh, actual test itself. Uh, in summary. Uh, relax. It's actually not hard uh, test, even though it's six hours. 
uh, you need to take breaks. If you have to take the whole six hours they give you, you know, you're not ready. So take a couple of 10, 15 minute breaks, uh, splash some water on your face, uh, get a drink of water. It's, uh, it's totally fine and uh, it'll actually uh, break, up the, break up the time. Uh, always answer every question like a stuffed shirt. Not a super smart engineer. Uh, the test is not a technical one. When you're looking at uh, questions, it's not reconfigure the X and Y. It is uh, discuss your concerns with upper management or the board of directors, right? So always answer like that. Uh, stay positive. You're going to pass. And then uh, uh, eat right and get a good night's sleep and, and uh, you'll pass. I wanted to show you the old versus the new domains. Uh, basically, uh, you had you had uh, 10 that went into 8, but they didn't remove any content. All they do is uh, uh, retool the uh, the ones that they had. So these are one for one up here, uh, and as you go down, they, they basically get uh, combined in the, it together. Okay? They renamed a few, so it's not a big deal. Supplemental, uh, this is calculating EF, SLE, ARO, and ALE. So these are terms you're going to have to know. Uh, so you can you have to memorize them and then you'll have to be able to calculate them. So uh, EF's exposure factor, it's the percent of value an asset lost due to an incident represented in a decimal. Uh, so if you have a thousand bucks and you lost uh, uh, 800, um, it's a 20% exposure factor. So the single loss expectancy, how much would it cost you if it happened just one time? And uh, your SLE, SLE is asset value times exposure factor. SLE equals AB times EF. And then the ARO is the annual rate of occurrence. How many times does it happen in a year? Uh, the exam will try and trick you. So it says it occurs every five years, which is actually 0 0.2. So um, ALE, annual, annual loss expectancy, SLE times ARO. How much will you lose per year, right? SLE times ARO. Uh, this is an example. If a forest fire occurs about once every five years and presents to be a risk to the building, the ARO is 0.20, right? It's one divided by five. So remember that uh, they're going to give these uh, uh, exam questions in word format um, like this, and then you'll have to figure out these particular items. So just go really slow. Let me show you the previous slide. Go really so slow and say, what's my exposure factor? What's my SLE? And remember these equations, right? What's my ARO? What's my ALE? And then just write them down as you get them. So uh, uh, then just go slow and you'll be able to get those. Just really think it through. Um, if a forest fire is expected to reduce the value of a building by 20% from a million to 800,000, the exposure factor is 0 0.20, 800 divided by uh, a million, right? So a lot of math can be involved in quantitative assessment, but the CISSP exam focuses on SLE, ALE, and ARO formulas. That's all. That's all they focus on. Uh, um, maybe one or two of the questions you'll get. Uh, hint is uh, something like, should you buy insurance? Well, if the insurance is more than the actual uh, expected loss, uh, the A A L E annual loss, then you shouldn't buy it, right? So uh, just pay real, real close attention. Here's another item on the uh, SLE. So if a customer database is hacked and the asset value is 432, uh, the exposure value is 0.74, and puts the SLE at 320, annualized frequency is 0.25, and ALE ends up being 80, 80K. So uh, go through these with those formulas I gave in a couple slides back and uh, really study those because you'll have at least three or up to six questions at least on the test uh, concerning these and that it'll be a big scenario so um, by far the probably the uh, most tricky uh, finally he's got some uh, helpful study guides um, this sunflower study guide and I'll show it to you really quick um, it is a uh, it's a PDF and it's uh, it's older in that it's got the ten domains but uh, my word is it really nice so um, it's got security management the access control right 
So it's got a whole bunch of slides and it tells you everything you need to learn. So this is a really good uh, um, exam study guide. It basically summarizes all of the things that uh, uh, could be on the test. Um, what I put on there is, is what um, my experience has taught me is the best way to study and uh, um, to learn all of these items you can you can basically go through mine and then review with this particular study guide okay um, techexams.net is a is a great resource um, so definitely something to check out take a look at the forums on CISSP there's a lot of helpful tips and hints and study guides and uh, way people pass the test um, it's a really great site and ccure.org uh, is probably the de facto standard for CISSP studying uh, buy the test on there I think it's 50 bucks for three months uh, totally worth it uh, spend three months uh, on on the study you could do it in a month you could probably do it in two uh, give yourself a 90 day window book your test first um, and then study up to that test date so don't book it over uh, three months and uh, book it to start studying okay so definitely uh, set your goal first and then go for it I hope uh, you guys have enjoyed this uh, series and uh, I look forward to uh, everyone passing the test and uh, talking to you again uh, have a great one and thank you